So good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I'd like to welcome you to, the, to learn more about the latest member of our WOLF family, which is the online SPE solution. My name is Annika Mühlebach, and I'm a product manager for analytical HPLC at Ageland. So why should you work with uh, Ageland valves? What is all about these valve solutions? So valve based solution help you to automate your workflow. So you can boost performance and you also can save time by um, optimizing your system utilization through our single vendor solution, you will reduce costs. The 1200 Infinity Series quick change valves are based on a concept of separated valve head and valve drive. So you can mount the valve head um, very quickly just by clicking it in the respected valve drive. With respect to the valve heads, we have quite a variety of different valve heads. So they come in various materials, in stainless steel or in peak for bio applications. They come for different pressure ranges for 600 bar or up to 1200 bar. And you can mount these valves in various valve drives. So we have the external valve drive, which can be mounted either left-hand side or right-hand side of your LC stack. Then we have the flexible cube. Inside the flexible cube, you can mount up to two valves, and I will speak about it in more detail later on. And also we have the 1290 infinity thermostatic column compartment, the, the column oven where you also can mount a valve. As you've seen, all these valve drives belong to the 1290 series. Nevertheless, you can mix and match your system with all modules of the 1200 Infinity series. So not only in 1290 LCs, but also in 1260 LCs or 1220. For any flexible individual valve applications, you may choose one of these valves, for example, for column selection or for solvent selection. But we also offer complete valve solution meaning a complete solution including software. So you know there is a method development solution. Colleagues have presented it yesterday. Then we have the 2D LC solution, which was presented this morning. And so now, new in the family, is the online SPE valve solutions. And to learn more, you are very welcome to visit our website. So why to do online SPEs. Well, whenever you need to enrich your analyte prior to analysis or when you need to remove matrix components in order to make sure that you meet the lowest detection limits for trace level, for example, water analysis, solid fake extraction is a very powerful technique. And doing it online with LC, you gain efficiency and improve throughput. This slide gives you a schematic um, yeah, setup of our configuration based on the 1260 Infinity LC and coupled with the triple quadruple MS of our 64 series family. So you notice there is a quaternary pump, there is an auto sampler, this column compartment, triple quadruple MS for detection, and heart of the configuration is a flexible cube. And you also may have noticed is that in this configuration, there's only one LC pump. That is because inside the flexible cube, which is shown over here now, um, there's a built-in single piston pump. That's a reciprocating a single piston pump for flows up to four milliliters per minute, which can be used to condition and load your cartridges. In addition, you find a solvent selection valve for up to three solvents. So you can use this valve to select the appropriate solvents to condition your cartridge. And you find up to two valves, and with our respective valve kits, you can mount valves and SPE cartridges inside this module, close the cover, and have it nice and neatly in your stack. So how to get started? Inside the starter kit, there is a two-position 10-port valve, which is connected this way, that you use the flexible cube pump to rinse your analyte on the first cartridge. And meanwhile, the LC pump is used to elude the analyte from the second cartridge. Bring it further to the analytical column and inside the detector. 
So for injection, when you use a 1260 infinity standard auto sampler, you can inject up to 1.8 milliliter. When you switch the valve, then you will use the LC pump to elude your analytes from the first cartridges onto the analytical column inside the triple quadrupole. And meanwhile, the flexible cube, the smaller pump, is used to condition or load the second cartridge. So to prove the feasibility of this flexible cube solution, we have participated in an interlaboratory um, validation study in January in accordance to the German DEAN standard. So that's all about quantification of trace level herbicides in real water samples, which have been spiked with a certain amount of herbicides. And we've done it by an online SPE LC MS MS approach. Over here, you find a suite of herbicides we have been looking for, and further information can be found in these application notes with, which have just recently been published and also at the website. With respect to linearity, we found a very nice uh, linearity. Over here, you find um, the calibration curve for metallochlor, and it's a dilution series from 500 nanogram per liter down to 10 nanogram per liter. And um, according to the DEAN um, standard, um, limit of quantification of 25 nanogram per liter is required. You also see for a QC analysis we have done, the QC sample just fits very nicely on the external calibration curve. And this chromatograms over here show the mass chromatograms for the spiked water sample and our calibration. And we found the spiked water sample was spiked with 50 nanogram per liter, fitting very nicely with the calibration curve. With respect to recovery, we found for nearly almost all compounds, recovery is about 80% in a real surface water example. This slide gives you the average of five samples, which have been spiked in different concentrations. And we also found very nice um, and low relative standard deviation for peak areas, which have been below 3%. Only for two compounds, it was for something. And for retention time, uh, relative standard deviation was even better, being below 0.1%. I mentioned we have these two cartridges, two reusable cartridges. And when you work with reusable cartridges, of course, you need to make sure that you are not buzzed by carryover. So this chromatograms show you um, some results for a um, 100 PPT injection of metoxerone given in the first line. Right after the uh, standard, a blank was injected, and we found that um, the limit of detection um, was not met, so we couldn't find any of the metoxerone left. For comparison, that's a standard with one nanogram per liter metoxerone. So in the suite of these um, 27 herbicides, um, only two had a low carryover of below 0.5%. Well, doing online SPE is fine, yet you may also use your system uh, for direct injection LC. So that's a way to go with the online SPE starter set and just add an additional direct injection kit. This kit contains the respective valves and all the capillary needed to be mounted inside the flexible cube. And now you end up with two two-position 10-port valves. And in this uh, first position, you go from your LC pump directly to the analytical LC and further to the MS. And when you switch, you end up in the configuration I just have shown, meaning that you can use the two SPE cartridges in an alternating manner to do your online SPE. Well, that's nice, but maybe you would even need to do more. So we have also Additional kits, we have kits for multi-SPE, where you can mount up to 12 SPE. And we have high volume injection kits. Those kits allow you to bring volume up to 5 milliliter on your online SPE cartridges. And we have flask sampling kits, which um, is sampling out of flask, meaning uh, an unlimited volume, whatever you need. So to summarize, with the HLAND 1200 Infinity Series online SPE, you have a very nice tool to increase sensitivity. 
So prior enrichment with online SPE allows all the trace level down to the low nanogram per liter range using also the Ageland 6460 triple quadrupole instrumentation, which you know the 6460 is less sensitive than the 6490, but doing online SPE before you also meet the lowest detection limits. With the 1290 Infinity Flexible Cube, you have a very cost-effective solution because, as you have seen, there is a peristaltic pump inside the cube so there is no need for a second LC pump, and a second LC pump, of course, costs. And you have these nice little solvent selection valves, which is um, a very good tool to condition and rinse your cartridges. It's all set up very nicely in one module, so you have a neat and tidy stack, and it's a very flexible solution for medium throughput labs. So it supports online SPE and direct injection LC. <coughs> Upgrade is easily possible. If you have an existing setup, just get the flex cube and make it possible for online SPE as well. And further online SPE kits are planned. And for more information, you may go to our website and you certainly also have noticed we had two posters around um, for analysis of herbicides and also some more detailed information about the round robin investigation we have participated in. Well, so thank you so far, and if there are any questions, I'm happy to answer. Yeah, does it affect void volume to uh, have both direct injection and SPE? Do you increase your void volume during direct injection as a result of having the uh, SPE set up? Mm. Do you understand the question? You mean if you have any spare volume because, um, yeah, there is some because you go through the, an extra valve, but uh, it's an, a different flow path. So you are not in the flow path with the cartridges. So that's uh, for HPLC separation, it's, yeah, neglected. Yeah. Because I thought there was an extra valve which you have the flex cube. When you use the flex cube, you have an extra valve. Yeah, you introduce uh, an additional valve, indeed. So there is an additional you have the volume uh, introduced by the valve, but uh, you do not have extra volume by the online SPE cartridges because those are in the other flow paths. Yeah. yeah. What kind of cartridges do you have? What is the packing material? So the question was what kind of cartridges was used? So that's a bond elute cartridge with a PLRP material, which is a polymeric material, a hydrophobic one, and a particle size was a 15 to 20 micrometer. Do you have any other solid traces uh, planned in the future, or can we, can we use some, some other uh, traces? Uh, well, the question was about um, if there are further um, stationary phases to be used in the cartridges. Well, we certainly have planned um, some, indeed. And yet, so um, how to address it? So that's the H-Land cartridge, but uh, the wall is a bit bigger. Um, yeah. And certainly there are more to come. You also analyze biofluids or body fluids. This is just more Oh. Yes, so question was, uh, what about biological samples, biofluids, blood for Mr. Bose, probably? Um, in principle, yes. Uh, so far, we haven't tried it. But in principle, these cartridges are reusable, and um, you could just choose the solvents you need. Um, it should work as well. Uh, when you're using water as a sample, what is the lifetime of your material, and what do you anticipate the lifetime will be when you start putting uh, salts such as urine, as it would be encountered with urine and blood? Um, so we suspect uh, the more matrix, the more complex matrix you have, uh, the, the more often you need to change cartridges. With uh, water samples, we've made very good experience for, for hundreds of samples. And I think uh, also our next speaker will address these uh, number of, of samples you can do with one cartridge. On the water samples, what volume do you recommend? One mil, ten mils? Uh, for the results I've shown for you, the SPE. we yeah. used a 900 microliter. 900 microliters. Yeah, and that was fair enough to meet the limits of quantification we wanted to need, to meet um, with respect to the Steen standard. But you can go up to uh, one 
0.8 milliliter if needed in this setup with this auto sampler. Otherwise, if more is needed, you should go for one of the upgrade kits.